What are presidential candidates say about us as a people? The race is on, or should I say the battle, for who we hold the seat for the highest office in the land, the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Just thinking about this title actually gives me shivers. The president, commander in chief, two roles that will define the success or otherwise of our dear nation. The president, really from the root word to preside, President, he presides over the affairs of the nation, particularly the growth and development of the economy, which in turn translates to the wealth of its people. Basically, the economy of a nation contributes largely to the economy of its people, which in many cases contributes to the happiness index and can contribute to your level of welfare and therefore happiness. In other words, if I may exaggerate a bit, your choice of president can contribute to your level of welfare and your happiness. If you don't believe me, I mean, just look around you today. Today is 12th of May, 2022. Are you a happy citizen? Does it have anything to do with what is going on around you, rising costs of food and welfare in general, and dwindling value of your currency and your economic power? On the other hand, also the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, this speaks to the safety, security, and the protection of lives and properties of the citizenry. Again, look around you. Do you feel safe? Does your family feel safe? What about your relatives in the North? Or in the southeast? Are they living a life devoid of fear, or of kidnap, robbery, assassination, etc.? Many times we do not actually consider the gravity or import of our decisions when it comes to elections. This time, in choosing the president of a country like Nigeria. Now, look closely at the candidates we've had, you know, uh, before now. Cast your mind back, the president since 1999, when we decided to take the path of democracy. We've had one president, Richard Gonvassenjo, had the late president, Omar Musa Yaradwa. We have the president, good luck, Jonathan. Then President Muhammad Abuari. Assuming we chose the best qualified candidates and indeed the best of us to represent us as president, then what do these four men say about us as a people? It's another election cycle. The policy is heating up again. Beyond party primaries in which these events are bedeviled with bribery and counter bribery of delegates which actually results in the candidates with the most money, you know, clinching the tickets versus the most qualified or experienced candidates. So the more money you have, the more your chances of clinching these tickets. I do advocate that we actually put the candidates to the test by doing the following. One, we ask the important questions, ask pertinent questions about how they actually intend to get out of this quagmire. And then that helps us to weed out those who don't have a well articulated plan. Also, which disqualify everyone that has been proven guilty for fraud or corruption. Again, we have to slash the salaries of these office holders to slightly higher than the minimum wage so we can truly see who is really ready to serve. I mean, if you do this, let's see what happens. I assure you what I will find is level and we'll find those that truly care about service to the people, not just those that are obsessed with service in their pockets. Thank you. You know, the part, the part you talked about uh, slashing salaries has always been an issue over the years. But we all know that no um, member of the legislature or the executive or even the judiciary we will be happy to do such, you know, a slash of the salaries. I'm sure our politicians would not be happy to do that. I know there was a particular petition that came online to say that his salary was about um, 50,000. There was a time and a lot of people debunked that and said that it was a lie. So I, I believe that if you want to serve, uh, you, can still, you can still end well. You can still end well. Uh, we all know that in the UK, what Nigerian politicians earn is far, uh, you know, more more than what uh, people earn in the in the UK if you're if you're serving, uh, so I just think that it's it's not um, a function of reduce. You could reduce your salaries, but we all know that Nigerian politicians are there for the money. The money is a motivation. So you should work regardless of whether you're paid well or you're not paid well. You should be ready to serve your people. You should be able, be able you are expected to do the right thing. And we, we realize that when these people, when these politicians do things for us, you know, there's so much noise. Like, well, we make so much noise. But this is what they are supposed to do. It's your duty to do, to provide 
good roads. It's your duty to, you know, to do all of that. But, you know, there's this um, assumption that um, they, they are doing something fantastic. So that's why they make so much, so much noise. So that's, that's I, my I, opinion. I think for me, um, my thoughts actually is around when Tolu mentioned, um, asked us to cast our mind back to previous precedents. I mean, it's just a reflection of our decisions. Mm. Um, I guess some of us around here might not have been involved in that process at that point in time. But regardless, our parents were, our elders were, our siblings, or even for some of these leaders as well, we voted them in. It's just a reflection of who we are, what kind of people we have actually placed across board. I was just thinking, if probably in our, all of these four leaders that were placed, if any one of them was really qualified set of, um, they were qualified to do the work in terms of not just um, um, saying that they went through school, because I mean, that was, there was a time that was the mantra, that I was, I'm an educated person. Mm. Um, then he moved on to, I am <laughs> for the people. I understand people's plight. I've been yeah, there. Yeah. But if we're selling beyond those things that are mundane, and we're actually um, looking for candidates that really would serve the people's interest, I can imagine what Nigeria would have been if those are the kind of people that were elected from 1999 up until today. That just helps us think that really, indeed, our elected officials would determine the destiny of the nation and its people in general. So we really need to make wise choices going forward. Mm. Yeah, the thing is, um, speaking about making money from politics, it's possible to do the right thing and make any decent living doing mm. the right thing. Uh, the politicians in the US and the UK, they are paid decently. Mm. But they don't see politics, politics to them is not just a career path, it's more like an act of service. Mm. So. Um, I remember the last time I was listening, that was a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to an interview of a Nigerian who is a Briton. She is a British, but a Nigerian. She contested for an office, I think member of the parliament in Britain. And she said, they were asking her, how much was your election, the process there, everything. She said she spent less than about 8,000 pounds. Convert that to Naira, that's a chicken change. Mm. 8,000 pounds. And that money was like, some of our friends came together gather mm. that money. The money was meant to send meals, letters, print some flyers, and that was all. Not for bribery. It's not, mm. But yeah, how much, if you do the mathematics, 8,000 pounds cannot even buy expression of interest from, for, mm. for, exactly. for the least political for the least party. political mm. for right. Because their politics is not monetization. They, sure. they, they attach value to this yeah. thing. And, sure. and is it possible to make, is it possible for political parties to make presidential for almost free, but then let it be men of values that can afford it? If it's mm. free, but the fact that it's free, you still can't afford it. You have to meet a certain level of criteria. Mm. So we need to shift our mind from politics of money to politics of values. I'm not mm. saying politicians so. should cut down their salary beyond comfort. Of course, we know that their salary is too high. Yeah. But what mm. I'm saying is that they should do the right thing. Where, where they steal from, where they use misuse from, they should stop it. They can earn a decent living mm. and actually fix the country and do the right thing. You don't have to be poor, be playing politics. Mm -hmm. At the other hand, you don't have to be rich from politics either. There should be a balance. So what I hear, sorry, I mean, sorry, before I mean, they add, what I hear you say is that the filter, the set of people that goes through the um, the system actually um, that we get to elect mm. has to be corrected. That's yes, the value so, system, mm. too much monetization of the process. Right. Mm. I mean, what has happened with the politics has happened with um, teachers. I mean, how many of us come up and want to go and teach? Somebody wants to go and teach. I mean, if you That's interview value, several value. teachers, you, they tell you, <laughs> I'm just using this as my, you know, writing block to my real job, you know. So, <laughs> but teachers actually, can, I mean, one day I was driving back home and I realized how much teachers has contributed to you know, where we've come, right? But nobody wants to go teach because, because it's positioned as something that is not lucrative. So politics is also positioned as something that is lucrative now, but we've left it to some group of people. I think we need to, it's also a shade to me personally, right? We, we come over here, we just talk, we need to go back and, you know, control the options. Now, they decide back end who are going to vote. And our vote kind of like is no longer so as powerful as we think. This might look very, but it's the truth. We need to go back and see, get into the grassroots. 
let's not leave it to some people who supposedly mm -hmm. shouldn't be there. But I mean, if we keep saying these things, it's a cycle. Our kids will grow up and <laughs> they <laughs> say, Dad, what did you do? <laughs> you were just talking and all that. But, but I think it's, it's the reality, it's the truth, you know, that we don't want to really, we don't want to get involved, but we just want to stay out of it and keep just being intellectual around it. Let's just try and create the, even if you can't get involved, support somebody, you know, find somebody that can actually push to getting involved at that grassroots. Just like you said, if we can do that, I mean, we, these we, people are a reflection of the society. When it comes to campaigning or, you know, electionary process, they want to buy goods, materials or gifts to, to lure voters mm -hmm. because they believe that too much money, stomach infrastructure, we need to grow beyond that. Yeah. I stick to be value. Yeah, back to Tolu. <laughs> Look at the next after the break. Please stay with us.